It finally happened. I cheated on a carnivore diet. That's right, everybody. I cheated on my carnivore diet. What now? Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But I'm glad that you guys are joining me here for my weekly health vlog. So I'm going to start doing these going forward on Wednesdays because I wanted to tell you guys that starting here very soon, we're going to be doing the Backstage with Chris Tuesday night live streams at 6 o'clock. And if you haven't heard about this, basically I'm going to be cooking dinner and I'm going to be answering questions, talking to you guys, giving you cooking tips and advice, recipe ideas, uh, just answering things about my health. Ash and I will talk with you guys about whatever you want. We'll talk about music. We'll talk about anything that you guys want. We just want you to come hang out with us on Tuesday nights, 6 Central Standard Time. So that's 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time for those folks here in the United States. So we're just going to have some fun. It's just a fun hangout time if you can join us and you can come hang out with us and have some fun. We would love to have you guys there. That's gonna be starting either the end of January or the beginning of February. I will let you know. We're gonna pick a specific Tuesday and we'll be announcing it on the channel. So make sure to keep an eye on the channel here or my Facebook page, my Instagram, any of that kind of stuff. We'll let you know when it's gonna start happening. So. so today we are in the studio. I am just here at home. We are snowed in in Nashville and we're just kind of waiting for some tow trucks to get some cars out of the way because there are a couple of cars that are abandoned by people that got stuck uh, trying to get into the area where we live in our town home. There's a little uphill area right there by a stoplight, and unfortunately people stopped at the bottom of that hill, and then they tried to drive up after the snow started happening. And they're stuck, so we're waiting on some tow trucks to get those moved out of the way, and we're waiting on snow plows, honestly, to come through and just clear the roads because they're all completely covered and iced over right now. So just not able to go anywhere, and uh, here at home, just enjoying time with my wife and my puppy dogs. So I believe they are actually out of the park right now playing in the snow because if there's anything Mel loves more than just about anything in the world, maybe except eating, it is snow. She absolutely loves it. So they're outside playing today. So I wanted to let you guys know about uh, an interesting experience moment for me, I guess, that happened here just a, a few days back and kind of talk with you about my health and my carnivore diet and cheating on my carnivore diet and what I think about that and how I feel about that. So we're going to discuss that a little bit. I have my keto chow salty electrolytes here with me today. I'm going to put my keto chow link down below. You guys can go there and you can use my discount code as well. And you can order the salty packets through the keto chow website right now. I absolutely love these things. I'm drinking them every single day and I like element. I like keto chow better. That's just me personally. I know some people prefer the element over the keto chow salty packets, but I will say the salty packets because of the extra magnesium and potassium, they make us feel really good. And I feel way better with these drinking these than I did with the element packets. So that's just my experience. If you guys would like to try them out, my link will be down below. And uh, I just, I love keto chow and appreciate them doing affiliate stuff with me. So I'll put my link down below. If you'd like to try them, I would highly recommend it. I think my personal favorites so far, I love all the flavors, but personal favorites are the Booyah Berry and the Citrus Splash, I think it's called. Uh, those are really, really good. I like, like the mango too. I like all of them, but but those are some of the ones that I, I tend to lean towards if I'm just in the mood for something. So anyway, go check those out. So let's talk about what happened. Um, I, weight-wise, I'm actually very happy because weight-wise, I'm just sitting right where I am have been for a while. And that's totally fine. I'm not worried about that. I'm, I'm totally okay with that. One of the reasons I'm totally okay with that is because I've had a couple of things that I'm not supposed to on a carnivore diet. Now, I told you guys I wanted to make it 365 days without a single cheat meal. And I did. I made it to January 8th which was 365 days on a carnivore diet with no cheat meals. Now I do use spices and some more dairy and drink coffee and that kind of thing. But as far as like sitting and eating vegetables or certainly eating sugar or any of those kinds of things, 
not a single cheat meal the entire 365 days. So if you're one of the carnivore police, this channel's not for you. We'll see you later. I did 365 days and I felt really good about that. And so I started talking with Ash as we were approaching 365 days and I said, I wanna start to experiment a little bit, not to go off the rails and not to have massive amounts of you know, vegetables, things like that, or especially not to have like things that are terrible for me. Like I'm not gonna, on day 366, go have like a bowl of pasta and, you know, sit down and eat an entire cake and drink a gallon of soda, whatever. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about experimenting by having a few veggies or fruits or different things here and there that are still generally pretty low carb, but I wanna see what kinds of things my body can handle. And one of the reasons I wanted to do this is because I've talked before on my health vlogs about how my emotional stability seems to get so affected by veggies and by plant matter and all this kind of stuff. And I get brain fog and I get irritable and I get all of these different kinds of things. Well, the thing is I haven't had that for a long time because I haven't had any veggies for a long time. And there have been some times where I have experienced some odd symptoms and you know, maybe a little bit of a brain fog or an irritability or things that, that happened, but not, not in the way that I used to. And so for a long time, I thought it was something that I was eating that I was still sensitive to, but I couldn't put a pattern together. And then over time, I realized that there was this pattern where I would go through this. And then it was two, three, four days later, suddenly I'd realized I'd dropped a pound or two or three pounds and that weight would not come back. And it seems like every time that happens, that exact same pattern happens. So I started to realize, I think that there's more going on here just than me eating something that's messing with my gut and suddenly my brain is inflamed. There I'm sure may be an element of that, but I don't think that's the only thing that's going on. And part of what I was starting to hypothesize is that when my body is beginning to break down fat cells, something in those fat cells is being released. I don't know if that's oxalates. I, you know, I, I don't really understand the science of that. I'm not a doctor or a nutritional scientist or any of these things. I'm a musician and a songwriter, so I don't have the expertise in the areas of science and nutrition to say for sure what I think is going on. But I think my body breaks down fat cells and something is released and that does have a little bit of an effect on me mentally and physically and some of the symptoms that I used to experience with like irritable bowel syndrome and aches and pains and those kinds of things come back mildly for a day or two when this thing kind of starts to happen. It seems over time that I have healed and that my body does not have to deal with as much of that. So even when I do lose some weight, it doesn't seem like that happens as much or as often or at all even. I haven't lost any weight for a few weeks. I'm okay with that because that to me is not a stall. When I've talked about not losing weight in some past videos, people have suggested I do this or I do that or do something else. You know, here's how you get out of a stall, whatever. I'm I'm not in a stall. I, I would have to go probably four to six months without losing a single bit of weight, even if I was being strict and you know, doing doing that before I would probably personally feel like I was in a stall. Now you may not feel that way, but I do. That's because I realize my body has hundreds, even thousands of different things that it's trying to do on a daily basis. And it's smart enough to know if losing weight is the priority or if there's other things that it needs to use the nutrition and the building blocks of that nutrition for first. So unless I really hit like some long-term period you know, of like months and months without losing any weight when I know I still have extra weight to lose. I don't really think of it as a stall and I'm not really concerned about it. And truthfully, in my health vlogs going forward, I may or may not even bother talking about my weight on a regular basis. I may just do like, I don't know, every every month or something, I might talk about it once or twice maximum and just, just kind of go, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But my weight coming off as fast as it can is not really my focus and my priority. Although I do want to get to my ideal body weight and I have a goal of this year, I'd like to lose another 50 pounds if possible, or as close to it as I can, because that'll put me down in the anywhere from 180 to 210 kind of range. If I can get below 220, that'd be 40 pounds away basically from where I am right now. If I could get down to 220, that would put me in striking distance of an ideal body weight, I think somewhere in there, although it's been so long since I've been that weight, I don't actually know. I think that would put me fairly close. And so that's a goal for this year, but I'm not, 
I'm not a person that subscribes to the idea that I can find a way to hack into my body and force it to lose weight. So I've had people suggest protein sparing modified fasting. I don't really believe that. I tried that a couple of times back when we did keto and carnivore the first time for me. I really did not like it. I did not feel good on it. And it just was not something that I was really interested in doing. And, and if that works and people like it and they feel good, I think that's fine. You know, it's, it's, I'm not a doctor and I can't tell you what you should or shouldn't do with that. But if that makes you feel good and that makes you feel happy and you think that works for you, then by all means, go for it. That's not something I'm interested in doing. I've also had people talk about fasting and that I should incorporate fasting. I generally do fast. I usually eat one meal a day, although lately I've had two meals a day just in the wintertime. Sometimes I notice I, I tend to be hungry more often. So whatever, that's something that I just kind of eat intuitively and I don't really worry about, but I've had people suggest fasting. I've done fasting and I know it works, but again, if I'm fasting, not because I'm not hungry, but because I'm trying to force myself to lose weight, that's the same thing as starving myself for a day or two or three, however long it is I would try to fast. And I'm just not interested in, in trying to do that. Making yourself miserable to try to force your body to do something I don't think is advisable. I just don't think that there's a great chance for success with that. So not particularly interested in trying to do that unless my body wants to naturally do it. I do want to incorporate more exercise this year. I've talked about in one of my previous health vlogs that I have goals that I'm going to do every single month, a different goal. This month for January was getting my coffee content down and I'm happy to report I've done that. I was drinking 10 shots of espresso a day. It's not good, that's, that's way too much. Even if coffee is totally fine, there's just no need for that. I just had built up this reliance on caffeine because I get up so early and I work so many jobs that I just was using caffeine too much. So I increased my electrolyte intake and I've actually been reducing my coffee. I went from 10 shots down to eight, then it went eight from to six from six to four, and then from four down to two. So now I'm only doing two shots of espresso a day. I did that week by week and uh, started there at the beginning of the month. And I'm already down to two shots a day. And honestly, I'm fine. Keep my electrolyte intake up and I'm good. So that's one goal down. Another goal that I want to work on is to incorporate some more activity, some more exercise, some more things that I can do that will help to just keep me healthy and keep me active and keep me feeling good. But I'm not gonna use exercise as a way to try to force my body to lose that weight. So there's a lot of different suggestions that have been made and I appreciate everyone's suggestions, but you know, I'm just on a journey here and I'm figuring out what my body wants to do and how I feel best. And I don't wanna force it to do anything in any one direction or the other. I wanna do things that have good knowledge and science backing them up and then I want to let my body tell me how it's doing, what it needs, what it's feeling, and just be calm. So this brings me around to an interesting point because I said I'm happy about the fact that I have not gained any weight. Well, on the day after I hit 365 days, Ash and I went out to dinner and I had a burger with lettuce wrapped around it and some onion on it and pickles and I had some salad and guess what? I didn't die. It's amazing. I ate some veggies and I didn't die. Now I could tell I felt a little bit different. You know, my just my stomach and intestines just felt a little different with fiber in them like that for the first time in a long time. I didn't really feel any kind of severe negative effects of that. And that's not to say that I think I should go do that on a daily basis. I do think carnivore seems to be the best choice for me. But it's nice to know that if I go out to dinner and maybe there's a lettuce wrap burger on the menu and you know you can get a side salad with it or something like that, that I can have that and that I'm not a pariah for people who are trying to go out to dinner and you know it's like, oh don't don't invite, you know, don't invite Chris and Ash. Chris doesn't eat anything but meat. And, you know, like I, I don't I don't want to be that person. I don't want to make any of my own health choices related to what other people think or what other people want. But I also don't want to be a person that other people feel like they don't know how to be around or they don't know how to interact with. And so uh, just understanding what my options are gives me more of an ability to maneuver the cultural situations that we exist in. And I, someone made a comment on one of my videos saying that, you know, they 
Um, they never make their decision about food based on what anybody else wants because, you know, that's just not important. And, and I do agree with that, generally speaking, and, you know, to a point. But I also know that the reality, especially as a musician, when you're networking with people, is you're put in social situations. Culturally, this is a thing you have to be able to maneuver around when you're in situations where people are offering you something or they want to take you to dinner or they want to meet you someplace or whatever the case may be. And you don't have to make your dietary decisions based on them. But it is helpful to know what you can and cannot handle. So when you find yourself in a situation that maybe you didn't expect to be in, you know how to make choices and maneuver those situations to be a gracious attendee and to leave a good impression and to let people know they're valued. And I mean, like, these are really important things for me because health is important, absolutely. But your social health and who people see you as being and how they react to you and how they interact with you and the things that they value about you and what they understand you to be as a person, those are really important things too. And if you let your diet become so dogmatic that it becomes off-putting to people who you theoretically should be able to work with and should be getting along with, that can cause a lot of problems, especially in an industry like music. Just knowing what my body can handle is important to me. So I wanted to start experimenting and we went out to dinner and we had the lettuce wrap burger for me and the and the salad and, and honestly, I was fine. I don't wanna do that every day, but on the occasion that I do that, it seems like my body has learned to handle that a lot better. So let's talk about the real cheat though, because that's not actually the real cheat. The real cheat is that a few nights ago, my brother-in-law got engaged to his now fiance. So Tristan and Jay are engaged. They are going to be getting married. And one of the things that we did was we had kind of a little get together engagement party type thing at a, at a local barbecue place that we love called Edley's. Shout out to Edley's, they're absolutely amazing. Their food is great. They're very accommodating. And as a carnivore, I can order meat by the pound and that's all I gotta order. So it's it's great. So that's what I did, I ordered chicken by the pound. Their stuff is fantastic. We had this little get together, this little engagement party. But one of the things that I did, because remember, this is not a group of people who are keto and carnivore. This is a group of people from their church, her family, our family, friends, like, you know, all of these different people. One of the things that I did was I made cupcakes. I haven't made cupcakes in a long time, but when these kinds of things happen, I'm usually the person that gets asked by the family to do that. There's two things here. One, I think just because I don't eat stuff like that on a regular basis doesn't give me the right to insist on other people not doing it. And so if someone asks me, hey, would you do this thing for us? Even though I don't necessarily make it for myself to eat, that doesn't mean that I can't do it for somebody else. And I think if we take this approach of, well, I don't believe cupcakes are good for you, so I refuse to make them. I don't think that's kind, and I don't think that's giving the carnivore and keto way of life a very good image. Because it's one thing to say this isn't good for you, it's another thing to try to force that on someone else or refuse to do something that someone else has politely requested, would you be willing to do this for us because you're very good at it, because you are impressing on them your own belief about this. That's it's the same thing that religions do, right? Where I believe this and if you don't, I'm going to become oppressive to you and refuse to interact with you. That's, that's a bit of a problem. Now, if your convictions mean that you don't wanna make cupcakes for other people because you in, can't in good conscience do that thinking, oh, this is harming them, that's fine, then, then don't do that but just understand why you believe that way and make sure you're coming from the right perspective on that because if you come from a perspective that leaves people with a bad taste in their mouth, it just hurts the keto and carnivore way of life in this community in general because of the image that it spreads. It's one of the reasons there are so many people out there that think we're crazy. I see it happen all the time. People make comments online and they make us look like we're complete and utter whack jobs. And it just doesn't need to be that way. There's there's a much more graceful way to do this. So I made the cupcakes and I actually ate one of the cupcakes too. Now I will tell you that was an absolutely amazing cupcake, but let me explain why I did that. There's a couple of things. First of all, one of the best ways that I knew 
to show Tristan and Jay that I'm celebrating with them and that this is a special occasion was for me to do something that is completely outside of the character that they've ever seen. Jay did not meet me until after I had started the carnivore diet this last 365 days that I did. I was already a carnivore by the time I met her for the first time. Tristan's known her a lot longer, but I didn't meet her until after I started the carnivore diet. So she's never seen me eat a vegetable. She's never seen me eat a cupcake. She didn't even realize that I was going to. And I told them, I said, this is a really important occasion and this is something we're celebrating. And so I don't know any other way to show you that this is a special occasion that is outside the norm that I'm celebrating with you that is better than me doing something that is outside the norm for me. And so I ate a cupcake and it was very sweet. It's not something I want to do regularly, but it was also an act of showing someone that they're important to me to a point that supersedes my own in the moment. This is what I'm going to dogmatically believe and do like that was put aside so that I could say, I'm going to celebrate and I'm going to partake in something that I know is not good for me, but it does taste good and we're going to celebrate. And the next day I'm going to go right back to what I do. And that's a really important thing. I think to be able to, in appropriate circumstances, be able to decide what does that look like for you? And for me, that was eating a cupcake in that moment. I enjoyed it. I ate a cupcake. I didn't die. And I felt a little funky because of the sugar for sure. And I went right back to being a carnivore. The meal that I had before I ate the cupcake was carnivore. And the very next day I went right back to being a carnivore and I'm okay. Now I have a severe carb addiction issue that I have recovered from. So one of the things that is also important with this is for me to take away the fear of the power of carbohydrates. Now that is not to say that I can start having little cheats here and little cheats there and a little candy and a little cookie. And a... That's not what I'm talking about at all. What I'm talking about is in the moment of having that cupcake, it was an intentional choice for a specific reason. And having the self-discipline and the control over my choices about my diet to say yes to the cupcake at that moment and then continue to say no to that and all of the other carbs going forward, unless some other real special occasion would happen, that's a really important skill for me to have because there is a real long-standing tradition in the culture of the human race. And, and this looks different in various places throughout time and history and different geographical places. But there's a real long-standing tradition of people doing things as a show of something to someone else, right? We get married publicly to show people that we are choosing to be with this person. That's why there's supposed to be a witness and you know why there's people that come to weddings and stuff. Culturally, that's very relevant. This is why for those of us in the Christian faith, this is why we take communion. It's a act that is a memory and a focusing on something that is important to us in our faith and the, the body and the blood of Christ. It is us doing it in remembrance of what we believe about Jesus. This is something you see in other cultures where they ceremonially eat certain things or they ceremonially drink certain things or they go through rites of initiation or, I mean, all these different kinds of things. This is bred so deeply into the instinct of the human race where there are certain things we do culturally. And being able to make a decision, not because I need sugar, not because I'm addicted to carbs, but because I'm intentionally making a choice because it's important to someone else and knowing that I don't have to be afraid of the carbohydrate addiction I recovered from because this is an intentional choice that is not about the sugar, that is about the act. And then right after that, I go right back to being carnivore and I, if I need to get super strict for like a week or two or three or four or whatever I got to do, to squash anything else that happens, I can do that. I've already proven to myself I can do that. I went from a standard American diet to 365 days of carnivore with no cheats. So I can do it. I've already done it. I don't have to worry. I can do it again. 
that was one of the reasons I wanted to do 365 days was to prove to myself that I could do it and to take away my fear of the food that I know is not good for me, but that in certain occasions may have some kind of cultural relevance. Now that's for me. I'm not saying you should do that. That's for me. That's how I felt was the most appropriate and loving way to approach that situation because it was a cultural implication of an act to show that I'm celebrating with people that I love. So that's what I did. I had a cupcake and I did not die and I'm not going to continue having cupcakes. It was a simple choice in a particular moment where I felt it was important to do so and I went right back to what I'm supposed to do. This is the same thing with people who choose to have the occasional alcoholic drink. Everyone knows there's nothing about alcohol that's good for you, but we do it because we celebrate. Now the key here is that we don't do this to celebrate every single day, right? It's every day is not a celebration. If every day was a celebration, then the celebrations wouldn't be special, which is what makes them celebrations. So their engagement party, I had a cupcake. My birthday this year, Maybe I'll have something. I don't know. I'm not particularly concerned about it. And I'm also not looking ahead, trying to find reasons to celebrate and have things. It's, that's not the point. The focus, the perspective that I have is on being carnivore 90% of the time, 95%, maybe keto or ketovore from time to time, and just experimenting to figure out what makes me feel my best. And then on the rare occasion, an engagement party for my brother-in-law, which is a one-time party. We're not doing that every week or every month or anything. My birthday, maybe my wife's birthday, Christmas, right? A handful of times throughout a year, there might be a reason that I have something that is not keto, ketovore, or carnivore. And if I can stick to keto on those kinds of days and celebrate without really going that far away from what I'm already doing, I'll do that. But if there's a cultural or familial kind of reason where I feel like having a little of something that is not proper human diet, I'm okay with that. Because the people that I love are more important to me than trying to prove something and having a meat chip on my shoulder that makes me feel like I'm elevated above everyone else. And this is one of the things I've seen in the carnivore world. When you get the dogma, carnivore police people, it's not about helping people and it's not about taking into account the experience that anyone else has. It's just a, look how much better I am than you attitude. And so I proved two things with everything that I've done. By going 365 days without a cheat meal, I proved to myself and also to everyone who watches my YouTube channel, it can be done. And then by eating a cupcake, I proved that it doesn't make me better than anybody else and it doesn't make me any different than any other human who's out there on a health journey. So if anybody is trying to tell you that something you're doing is wrong and that you're out of control and that this isn't right and that's not right and carnivore isn't this way and you're doing this wrong and whatever, if they get dogmatic about this, remember this. Remember this perspective and remember that it's not about being perfect and it's not about pleasing somebody else. It's about doing what is best for your health and what makes you feel your best and being intentional about it. And you do have to admit things like carbohydrate addiction and you've got to cut that stuff out because it is harming you. But doing that because it's good for you should not lead you to a fear of it that causes you to then turn around and hurt someone else. That's my rant for the week. That's everything I have to tell you guys. And that's why I had a cupcake because it was important to show somebody else that I loved them. And one of the best things you can do is to make a sacrifice for somebody that you love. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys are having a wonderful week. I hope you're staying warm because it is very cold here in Nashville and we are stuck inside with the snow. Stay warm, stay safe. Don't eat a bunch of those cupcakes. <laughs> or whatever else it is you want to cheat with, if you make the intentional disciplined choice to have something, make the disciplined choice to go right back to the proper human diet for your own health and for your own good. This is Chris Cook in Nashville. Guys, eat your meat, love your life, and I'm going to see you all in the kitchen for the next recipe.